A float with Henry Morgan. The buccaneer, Henry Morgan, tells Geoffrey Hunter the full details of the raid he intends making on the coast of Nicaragua. Neither Morgan or Geoffrey have the slightest suspicion that the girl, Antoinette de Lacy, with whom Geoffrey has fallen in love, is really the Spanish girl, Dolores Pizarro, who is determined to take from Morgan the Aztec necklet and destroy him. Encouraging Geoffrey's love, she learns the details of Morgan's plans, and, aided by Dietz, she hopes to soon regain the necklet. Kitty, the tavern wench, has fallen in love with Geoffrey, much to the jealousy of Dietz, who hides with her one night in the garden of Government House, where she sees Geoffrey making love to Dolores. Immediately, her love turns to hate. You thought I'd tell you lies, eh, Kitty? I, I can hardly believe it. I, I can hardly speak. So he thinks to make a fool out of me, does he? He thinks because I'm Kitty the servant wench, I'm without feelings. He thinks I'm like a glove. When the fingers are through, I can be thrown to one side. Ah, yeah, well, soon forget him. I shall see that. I have been patient. I not worried you because I knew that soon you would find out that this hunter man is no good. And now I'm not going to be patient any longer. It's not been easy to see you and not take you in my arms and crush the very life from you. Oh, Kitty, soon the world will be just yours and mine. Take your filthy hands from off me. Ah. Kitty, what is this? Is this your gratitude? Because Hunter has spurned me, you needn't think I'm going to fall into your arms, dear. It's, I think no better of you now than I did at the time when I told you I wanted nothing more to do with you. And if you come near me in the tavern, I'll cause another riot and be pleased to take the punishment I get for it. Oh, no, I, no, I do not need to come near you at the tavern, Kitty. Soon you'll come away with me. We go away to some other place, huh? You're talking like you did the other night. I'm not going to stay and listen to you. I... I don't believe there could be anything you could do. I hear from the conversation that the flying girl is leaving very soon and you'll be gone aboard her. And when you come back, I'll not be wanting to see you. And now I'm returning to the tavern. There's work to be done and it's time I was doing it. Dolores Pizarro. Is that you? Yes, the yes. But how many times have I told you not to use that name? You have been a long time coming out to meet me. I've been waiting here in the garden ever since you returned to the house of Jeffrey Hunter. Did you not know I would be waiting? Yes, of course I knew. But I could not get rid of Jeffrey Hunter. Oh, how he loves chickens me. It is good to come and talk to you, Diaz, just once in a while when I can be my real self. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Tonight you are really wonderful. The way you twisted Jeffrey Hunter around your little finger. <laughs> the way you obtained that information. Uh, so it is to be Santa Paula Morgan is going, eh? He will go there, but he will never come back. I will take this information back to Cuba myself. That is one of the reasons I came to Jukat. But I will not be returning until I have the Aztec necklace. We will not be returning. Do not forget you do not make this journey alone, but I with another will be accompanying you. I had not forgotten. You need not remind me. You know I do not trust you. I think you play me false. But I have taken precautions. What precautions have you taken? <laughs> you think I'd be such a fool as to tell you? You want the Aztec necklace, and I am helping you to get it at a price. I want to make sure I get that price. Of course you will get it. I have promised. Am I not the daughter of the governor of Cuba? We do not make idle promises. Just the same, I make sure. And why should I trust you? Because you have no choice. One word from me and you will never reach Cuba. And should the English find out who you are, they would have no mercy. <laughs> Tell me, you saw the gem merchant? Mm -hmm. I did, and the gem is ready. Then show it to me quickly. Oh, not so fast, not so fast. I had to pay the man 100 guineas for the imitation stone. You will get the money. Now show me the gem. What is to stop me uh, on my uh, putting into practice uh, on my own that which we planned and taking the negative for myself? You eh? dare to even suggest such a thing. But no, I feel quite safe. You will not do that. You want to go back to Cuba, do you not? You want to take this woman with you. I am the only person who can get you back to Cuba and give you enough money to live comfortably for a long time. So, you see the arts. We are both at the mercy of each other. You know my true identity, 
And I know you want to get back to Cuba. I am not frightened of you. Hmm. Well, here is the imitation sapphire. It would take an expert to tell it is not a true gem. Oh, it is beautiful. It is bound to take Morgan's eye. Yeah, but there are still many risks to be faced. The gravest one is to get Morgan away from his quarters so that I can hide myself during his absence and watch what happens when Hunter gives him this stone. There are 100 reasons why Captain Morgan could be called from his quarters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the moment, the ship, she is very active. In another day or so, she will she'll quieten down and life aboard her will be normal. You, you let us wait till then. What if Morgan sails in the meantime? Oh, he will not sail. That I know. You leave this to me. Oh, I have no choice. This is the bait. I know you can set the trap. I leave it all to you. Come and sit down here in the shade, Hunter. You've been working like a slave all morning. The rest will do you good. Oh, it's hot. I'm wringing wet. Yeah, take it a bit easier, lad. You're not used to this sort of work. It'll knock you out. What a beautiful sight it is, looking from here across the bay. It's marred just by one thing. The convict hulk over there with all its human cargo? Yes. They've been coming off that ship all day. Poor devils. Uh, do not waste so much pity on them, lad. The ones who are really unhappy will not live long, and the others might find some contentment. Who knows? That's a callous way of looking at it. What happens to those people when they land? Well, most of them have their masters to go to. They're taken in charge as soon as they land. Oh, do not pull such a long face, Hunter. Some, I admit, are treated like slaves, especially if they're recaptured convicts. Then their time is very hard. But many of the others get good masters who give them free time and, and spending money to put in their pockets. Some of them know more comfort and home than they ever knew one in England. And to others it must just be hell. You're in a strange mood, Hunter. You've been quiet all morning. And from the way you're talking, I... I gather there's something on your mind. I'm worried. Remember I was not happy when you took Dietz back on board. Are you questioning my actions again? No, no. You gave me your reasons. But I've had some news about that man. Oh? What sort of news? Oh, he's been talking in a strange way to Kitty, making insinuations as to how important a man is going to be. Has a lot of money. He's made threats against her and to me. Well, that does not surprise me. Although I am interested to know whence he got that money. He's full of idle boasting. I, I don't think there's much mischief that he could get up to that could harm you, Hunter. He even suggested to Kitty that the flying girl would be sailing without him. Well, if we do, we do. Then I'd catch him when we got back. Was that all Kitty had to say about him? Yes. Hmm. It all seems very vague to me. But I shall watch the arts just the same. He was not on board last night. I wonder if he was with Kitty and if he said any more. Go to the tavern tonight and see what Kitty has to say. Oh, I say, lady, will you bring a thirsty gentleman a glass of rum? Jeffrey, I did not expect to see you so soon. Why not? Oh, I just thought perhaps the Dolphin Tavern was no longer to your taste. You've been listening to your friend Dietz again? Jeffrey Hunter, I don't want to start a row here. But men in this tavern have very uncertain tempers. And when two people start quarreling, there's no knowing where it will end. I don't understand what you're saying, Kitty. Don't you? Have you never hated anyone, Jeffrey? So much that you'd like to see them dead. I'm just surprised that I can keep my voice so low and be so quiet about it. Kitty, you must tell me why you've changed like this. Tell me. How is it you can keep yourself away from her, from her arms? Did you find her lips softer than mine, her hair more perfumed? Has she taken your heart completely? So you've learned about Antoinette. Learned about her? Did you not practically go from my arms into hers and fill her with soft words and, and let me believe that I was not giving in vain? Kitty, please, you must be fair. I have told you time and time again that I was not in love with you. I was grateful to you, but not in love with you. Did I not warn you that my love had turned to hate if I found that you played me false? And you just have no idea to what depths my wrath can go. You'll pay for this somehow, in some way, Hunter. I'll hit back at you, and when I hit, I'll see you smashed. 
You may not think a serving wench, a bond servant, a slave, would have the chance of hitting back at a fine man like you. But the fates will be kind to me and give me the chance to hit back at you. I hate you, Jeffrey Hunter. I hate you. I hate you. Well, well, well. No wonder if I'd catch up with you in Jamaica, Hunter. And I'd find you here so soon after I arrive. <laughs> How things been going with you over here? A little bit different than in England, eh? Well, come on, you don't mean to tell me you've forgotten me. Me, Clegg. You're making a mistake. I don't know you at all. Oh, that's rich, there it is. Hope you've struck it lucky like I have. Good master. First night he gives me the night off. So I come here to the Dolphin Tavern and the first person I meet is you, Hunter. You're making a mistake. I have never seen you before in my life. Excuse me, please. Good night, Kitty. I will try to see you again before we sail. Well, what do you know about that? Cutting me dead. Who does he think he is? He's just the same as me, a convict. Wait a minute. What is that you're saying? That chap's name is Hunter, isn't it? It is at that. And he cut me dead. I knew him in England before he sent out here on the convict ship. Well, would you believe it? So the fates have been kind to me already. Sent out here as a convict. You know, Mr. Clegg, what happens to escaped convicts in this colony? When they're caught, they're sent into the swamps with the heat, the fever, with the reptiles. And they work there until they drop. You must tell me more about the escaped convict, Jeffrey Hunter. The secret of Jeffrey's past is out, and Kitty's love has been turned to hate by jealousy. Learn if she uses this information to harm Jeffrey in the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan.